running out of steam. The presidential candidate said in an interview with the Christian Broadcasting Network he would consider the number two spot with Mr. Romney. And maybe you might laugh this off, but if he for some reason asks you to be the vice presidential candidate on his ticket, I know after all said and done, would you even consider it? Would you consider well, it? I, of course. I mean, look, I would do in this race, as I, I always say, this is the most important race in our, in our country's history. And so I'm going to do everything I can. So you're keeping your options open. I'll do whatever I, is necessary to help our country. Well, conservative radio host Steve Dace joins me on the phone. We were supposed to see you face to face, had a technical problem, but I wanted to talk to you anyway about this. Steve, what do you make of Santorum uh, saying that he'd be willing to do whatever for the country, which included being the vice president with Mitt Romney, a guy that he pretty much says at, at one point in time, he admitted the, the comments, but he said that he could not beat President Obama. Well, Tamara, I think Rick Santorum might have set political history yesterday. He had a rally at the U.S. Supreme Court. I'm not sure I've ever seen a presidential a photo op at the U.S. Supreme Court while it was going into session. He started off by using that as, I think, a, a genius opportunity to point out the similarities between Romney Care and Obamacare. But by the time we got to the end of the day, we got to that clip that you just played where he said, hey, that guy I just got done ripping at the U.S. Supreme Court, if he asked me to serve on his team, I, I'd consider it. And I don't know that we've ever seen in the history of presidential politics a candidate slam his opponent at the U.S. Supreme Court and then say he'd be willing to be his running mate on the same day. And I think it's a reoccurring pattern with Rick Santorum that he has got to correct as we head into what will be the strongest month for Romney. If you look at the calendar in April, a lot of blue state primaries and caucuses, a lot of victories for Romney on tap this month. Sir Santorum's got to survive this month in April to get to May where there's a lot more conservative states but when he keeps reinforcing the idea that hey Romney's going to be the nominee and, and maybe I'll work with him as opposed to no I should be the nominee and here's why I'm running he makes it harder on himself well to your point I want to play this back and forth on health care what Rick Santorum had to say and then Romney's response let's play it back to back please there's only one candidate who has the chance of winning the Republican nomination who can make this the central issue that will be a winning issue for us to win the presidency back, and that's Rick Santorum. And unfortunately, the worst person to make that case is Mitt Romney, and that's why, as I said, we're here today, and he's not. I'm not going to worry too much about what Rick is saying these days. Uh, I, I know that when uh, you fall further and further behind, uh, you get a little more animated. So there you have it, Steve. To your point, you've got uh, Santorum in front of the Supreme Court blasting the guy and then saying, well, I would consider being his vice president. Couple that with the little mini meltdown he had uh, with the New York Times reporter that he later bragged about, you know, you've not made it, if you will, until you've cursed out a New York Times reporter is basically what he said there. I mean, what are we seeing? Is it a meltdown for Santorum at this point? I think actually that New York Times exchange will help him with a lot of conservatives who have a lot of frustration with the New York Times. But I think what hurts him, and he has done this repeatedly, is that he will state a very bold premise that a lot of the Republican base that would like to rally to him agrees with. But then once he starts facing heat for it, he will begin backtracking it. And he's got to figure out, hey, if, am I willing to take this position and stick to it before I take it? Because when you are arguing that you are the principal candidate, and Lord knows, you and, and folks in you and I's line of work have got just oodles of material of Romney taking every position on every issue. Mm -hmm. So if you're Rick Santorum and you're going to make the case, hey, I'm the guy with the courage of conviction, mm -hmm. you have to stick to your guns when you articulate that. Okay, and you've stuck to your guns uh, so long in your endorsement of Newt Gingrich. So I've got to ask you, there's this report, and it's been confirmed, that Newt Gingrich, Steve, the guy you've endorsed for now, is charging 50 bucks for people to take a picture with him. Obviously, his campaign is cash-strapped. He is struggling. $50? I'll let you finish on this one. <laughs> you know, we addressed this on our show last night, as a matter of fact, and I, I don't know why this really bothered me. Maybe because the word, and, and it sounds a little old-fashioned, but the word tacky comes to mind. And I, I'm not sure who in the Gingrich campaign thought, hey, we're short of cash, so let's charge the four Republicans that actually live in Delaware 50 bucks apiece to try to raise money. I mean, that is just, that is an unnecessary self-inflicted wound. But I mean, is I think it, it just proof Luther. of what people said all along, that even with the books, you know, that he was really out on a book tour, when you look at some of the expenses of the account, how much of the
the money is going to him. Is he really just out of the race at this point? When you, to your own point, and you've endorsed him, when you stoop to that point and you're charging 50 bucks, it reminds me of those sports memorabilia conventions that you go to and you see your favorite, you know, football player, you get an autograph, you got to pay up to get it. Well, you know, I think it was Martin Luther who once said, if you're going to sin, sin boldly. <laughs> so if you're going to charge folks at, at a campaign event, then you do it like in your native Georgia when you might have 3,000 people come out, not five in Delaware. And what it does, to your point, is Newt has been the one candidate in this race who has consistently on the Republican side been willing to address big ideas and bold solutions. But it obviously lowers his own stock in, in saying that I'm the candidate that does that when you stoop to this kind of a level. I can't disagree with that. All right, Steve Dace live for us today. Steve, we'll see you soon. Thank you.